Hi there and welcome back to Planescape Torment. I'm Baru and we are still in the Gathering Dust bar. But we talked to all the people in the bar in the last video. We did get a few new quests. Norochi, a dustman I met in the Gathering Dust bar, told me of a mausoleum where the dead walk. He wanted me to look into the matter. He said the mausoleum entrance was north and west of the dustman memorial, memorial outside of the mortuary. He said I should go to the archway there, make a semicircle over my heart with my right index finger. Then the entrance would open. If I can find the problem in the mausoleum and solve it, then I'll return to Norochi and let him know. We also spoke with a dustman named Emoric, who not only knew the collector Farad, but he was suspicious of Farad's fresh supply of corpses that he was dropping off at the mortuary. I offered to look into the matter. And the Morik promised to reward me for finding out where the corpses were coming from. And I think those are the only new quests that we got. General wise, what do we get? A Narajia dustman I met in the gathering dustbar told me of a mausoleum where the dead walk. He wanted me to look into the matter. He said the mausoleum entrance was north and west of the dustman memorial outside of the mortuary. He said I should go to the archway there and make a semicircle over my heart with my right index finger. Then the entrance would open. If I can find a problem in the mausoleum and solve it, then I'll return to Narajia and let him know. What else? Anybody new here? No. Fine. Then we shall make like a tree and leave. So, let's continue All exploring. Right. We're still in the hive. There's another harlot here. We already talked to one. That should be enough. Uh, several harlots. Hive. Thug. All right. Done. Are they dangerous? All right. I thought there was something to explore here. Was Done. there a question mark symbol? Maybe not. There, here it was. What's that? Vines with black leaves. The stems look extremely sharp. Then let's not touch it. Say hi to the thug. You see a heavy sad looking man. He has a stone faced expression. Greetings. The man looks at you for a moment, grunts and raises his hand, revealing a wicked dagger. He smiles evilly and begins twirling it in a menacing arc. Oh, farewell. Oh wait, the attack. Well, screw you then. Did you see that? Fuck you. What do we get? A bronze ring? And a rusty dagger. I could equip that. This crude bronze ring looks like it might have doubled as someone's nose ring in the past. Despite the dense scratches, it might be worth a few coins to a local merchant. If we can find one, that is. I haven't found one yet. So, yeah. I mean, take a look at him. The nameless one <laughs> is not really a fighter. But he still prevailed. And Morty, yeah, uh, well, he's a little stronger. They're more dexterous and has a better constitution. So he's more of a fighter, actually. Than All the right. nameless one. The All right. We already chatted with uh, one of your profession. We already talked to you. Uh, more hive dwellers. Hey. No. Watch, Chief. I don't want to leave. Fuck it. So this goes to the northwestern portion of the hive. Thanks. You have to be careful where you click. Isn't that another Darbus here? Yep. So, well, um, what do we have here? All right. Done. What's going on? This obsidian mo monument has names chiseled on it. Stop! Who are you? An elderly hive dweller. 
A sense of great loss hangs over this elderly woman like a dark cloak. As you watch her, a long, sad sigh escapes her lips. Greetings. She looks up at your face, cloudy eyes squinting and straining to see you clearly. Forgive me, young cutter, but I am an old woman and do not see so well. Do I know you? Perhaps, but I don't know you. She mulls your answer over for a moment, nodding. What was it you wanted then? I had some questions. Questions? Her expression curls. Oh no, you're an adventurer, aren't you? Name, job and all the right. <laughs> yes, name, job and boy, bye. That's the way it works. Well, I won't have it off with you. I'm not an adventurer. Bothered. The woman jabs her finger at you. I have watched the dustman put the name of me husband, damn his soul, me son and both me daughters on their memorial. Adventurers, all of them. Why, I swung quite a sort myself in the day, so I knows one when I meets one. The old woman seems to be working herself into a fit. Her face has become flushed and flecks of spittle fly from her lips as she howls at you. Let her continue her tirade. I'll bet you've got all sorts of balmy questions. She mimics your heroic stance. Greetings, I have some questions. Can you tell me about this place? Who's the Lady of Pain? I'm looking for the magic girdle of Swank Iron. Have you seen it? Do you know where the portal to the 2817th Plains of the Abyss might be? Do you know where the Holy Flame and Frostbrand, Gronk Slain, Warpal Hammer of Wounden and Returning and Shooting Lightning out your bum is? She spits. Dang, oh, dang, 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 all of it. Only gets you in the dead book. I ought to kick you in the shins for even pestering an old woman about all about it. Now go away and leaves me in peace. Woo. She's mad. Can we talk to her again? As the old woman squints at your face, her expression becomes sour. Nay, 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 not ye again. I won't have another word with ye. So get, get. Okay. Done. Wow. Let's talk to Seftai. This woman's face looks broken and is covered in scars. They look like bite marks and fingernail cuts. She is cradling the shreds of several rags in her hands and is staring emptily at the wall of the monument, at the names there. Greetings. Sssss, get you back. The woman's teeth peel back, displaying a row of black canines. What do you want of Seftai? What's the matter? What wrong? Those co cow cowers men wrecked my car, attacked me, and killed three of my sisters who tried to stop them. Not sisters anymore. Now there's nothing but names on this memorial wall. Ca chaos man? Chaos man, affection, they says. What they are is an adult bunch that runs wild through the hive and does whatever they please. We never did no harm to them. Then they lope in like dogs and tear about anything within their reach. Who are these chaos men who attacked you? They're a hiver gang, a bunch of adult sods that call themselves the the starved dogs barking or some such balmy nonsense. Mm. Their actions were unjust. If you wish, I can see that the matter is rectified. If three deaths they caused, then three deaths shall these starved dogs suffer. A copper earring in your purse if you pen three of those murdering sots in the deck with that book, Jig. I'll see to it that they've they are put in the dead book. Can you tell me where they might be found? Go to the south gate, spiral rods from there, then walk around the block until you come to a place where men run in circles, howling at the sky sick sky. They are the starved dogs, they are. Go to the go out the south gate. Okay, it's not in this area apparently. I'll go look for them Updated then. Updated my journal. Looks like we have another quest. Um, help Seftai get her revenge. I ran into a strange woman, Seftai, by the dust memorial outside the mortuary. She was mourning the death of her three th three sisters who had been attacked by a group of the. Chaos man called the starved dogs barking. She asked me to kill three of their numbers to avenge the death of her sisters, and I agreed. She said her sisters were attacked a few blocks directly south of the mortuary. I could probably find these starved dogs there. And we will kill them. Because it is just. 
I ran into a strange room in Saftai. By the dust in memorial outside the mortuary, she was mourning the death of her three sisters who had been attacked by a group of chaos men. That's the same, actually. Okay. Good, good, good. Uh, what do we have here? Quentin? Tarantino or what? The man before you looks to be middle of height and years. He is stout with a thick, bull bullish neck and his shoulders are hunched, as if a great weight was pressing upon them. He wears an impatient look as he stares at the black monolith in front of him. Greetings. The man throws you a glance. There's a room cutter, no need to ask my leave to stand there. Actually, I wanted to know what this monolith was. It's a tombstone of for the plains, he scoffs. Graveyards of names are scratched on the rock. Can only hope my names... Can only hope my name's the one that will split this stone in twain. He points at the base of the monolith. Quentin, right there, hammered in just hard enough to send the damn thing crashing down. Tombstone for the plains? I, Quentin, smiles ruefully. The Dusty scratched the names of the dead on this monument here. He gestures around him and on the walls of this place. Not enough space by my reckoning, but no matter. They do their best. Can barely read half the names. What are you doing here? Reading the new arrivals. Try and find a new one every day. Try and remember if I knew him. Nothing more. The Dustin record the names of all that have died on this monument? I they scratch them on this rock and scratch them on the walls in this place too. Quentin scoffs. I don't know why they take the trouble to take accounting of the dead. The Dusties have more care for the living. The living? Ah, you know about the dustmen mourners that come to this place? They aren't mourning the dead, they say they're mourning the living. You can barely get a word in in them edgewise without them asking to mourn some poor living burg for you. Why do they mourn the living? You got me there, Cutter, he shrugs. Might want to put the question to them. Seems to me the dead are thrice worth the pity of any poor sort living in this pit, he nods at the monument. Every name on there is blessed in my book it is. Ever known anybody who came back after their name was put on there? You mean come back from death? Quentin shakes his head. Not a one cutter. Everything that lives dies and that's the way of things, he shrugs. Still, considering the planes go on forever and all, I suppose anything is possible. Oh, that's probably all I can get from him. The obsi this obsidian wall has thousands of names carved on it. <coughs> oh, he, she's here. Yeah, she, she's again. Hi. Guess what? Okay. Whatever. Hi, death of names. You see a dustman with a crooked smile frozen on his face. Despite the smile, his eyes are dull as stones. His right arm is shorter than the left and he keeps it tucked to his side, as if cradling a small child. Greetings. The dustman's eyes slid over you. Name. The way he speaks the word, it sounds like the tolling of a bell. Uh, I don't know. No name, no name can't help you. The dustman speaks in a curious sing-song voice. Need to give a name if you want to see where it's died. Updated my journal. What? Given a name, when you're born, give it back when needed no more. Death of names, death of names. His eyes swim across the monolith, then the walls of the area. Buried many names here. Death of names has. Tell me a name and I'll show its grave. Um, Dayonara. His eyes roll to the back of his head, then pop back. With a wild gleam, his eyes run across the walls of a monument, scanning the names at inhuman speed. Then he points at a section of the wall. Buried. Examine the spot he's pointing at. Chiseled into the black stone in tiny crumpled writing is the name you requested. It is almost lost beneath the sea of names around it. I had another name. Doll. He shakes his head. Not dead yet, the name is. Not buried here. No time. Not time, not time. Okay, let's try another one. Uh, Adan? He shakes his head. Okay, not dead. Can you bury a name for me? He nods, then unfolds his a small hand from where it is cradled on his side. It looks atrophied. In, it is the size of a child's hand. Costs jink to bury a name. Three coppers. Three. Um, now we could play a trick on him. Before we do that.
Let's save. Um, Bury Quentin. Not dead yet. Not buried yet. Not time. Not time. Okay. Buried. Okay, apparently we can't do this yet. That's cool. I was in a mischievous mood here. Let's not do this. So, how about we move Done. on? I'm still looking for this mausoleum. Where are you? Apparently that's it. Oh, there's the portal to the mausoleum, I get it. More hive thugs. Greetings. Farewell. We don't attack you, you attack us. And then we fuck you up. Um, I'm sorry. You're not getting away. Thanks. Done. So, Done. what do we get loot wise? Money. Another bronze ring. Alright. And a bronze bracelet. Let's equip it. And um, since the nameless one is a little hurt, maybe we should use one of those. I'm gone. Feeling better. Vines, yeah, they're extremely sharp. I'm gone. Thank you. Another angry hive dweller. Pox. This cowled figure is hunched by the mortuary gate. His face is obscured by the shadows of his hood. What little you can see in his chin, which is covered with stubble and what appears to be a foul green and purple rash. The rash seems heaviest around his neck, fading as it crawls up to his chin. Greetings. The figure doesn't budge. There is a moment of silence, then he responds in a high-pitched voice that sounds more suited to a girl of ten years than a man. Hi. Who are you? Pox, am I? Hi. Uh, Pox? Mother and father named me, wished a pox on firstborn. A curse given came true, it did high. Again your eyes are drawn to the purplish green rash covering pox's chin and neck. I had some questions. What are you doing? I wait for a deaders, do I? Hi. Deaders, corpses, why? Find a deader, take him through the gate and get some jink, then again I wait. Hi. Through the gate? Why? A deaders. To a dustman, what coppers to a collector? Bring them the dead, they give you copper at the gate. They do high. Why do the dustmen pay for the dead? Streets clean, dead us put in their place. Streets don't stink, dead aren't lost. Kept inside gate, all happy. High. What do the dustmen do with the deaders? They buy. All deaders inside gate, put them on slabs, cut them up, bury them, or make them walk. High. Make them walk? High. They make some get back up if the deaders give the dustmen leave to, and the deaders become a scale or zombs. Is the front gate the only way inside the mortuary? Hi, only dead or dustmen go in gate they do. You want pox make you deader again? Um, no, I had some other questions. Uh, do you know someone named Farod? Hi. Farod, collector, big name, has weight, cast long shadow, it does. Hi, collector. Hi, collector, gather deaders, bring them to the dustman for jink. Do you know where I might find him? Hi, in the hive, here he is. Somewhere is high. Can you be more specific? Hi, somewhere in the hive he is. Farod hide, he does. Very hard finding he is. Not worth finding he is. Not worth finding? What do you mean? Hi, many hates him, other collectors even. Sharegrave hates him. Not like Farrod at all, hi. Sharegrave? Hi. 
Shagrith big name carry weight cast long shadow he does tell Pox what to do he does would your boss this Shagrave know where for updated it is? my journal hi Shagrave knows darks he does no Sherrod are hiding he does Shagrave in Ragpicker Square, many blocks west of here. Hi. Say Shergrave that Pox sent you. Tell him Shergrave become Sher Copper with Pox. He will. Hi. Okay, what else could we do? I have lost a journal. You wouldn't happen to have seen one, would you? Hi. No journal have I seen. Things get lost in the hive, never found again. Maybe journal one of them. Hi. Okay. So let's save and see whether he can actually smuggle us in. But I'm afraid that my charisma is not high enough. So, can you smuggle me into the mortuary? Um, how about I pretend to be dead instead? Could you smuggle me in like that? Let Pox see you play dead. Are you play dead? A good Pox get you in. Hi. Pretend to be dead. Pox watches your performance without a sound. When you get back up, he speaks. Dust may not believe you, Dada. Always check to see if dead is Dada is Dada. And if Dada breathing, they won't take. Bad dealings, hi. Yeah. Doesn't work. Apparently, this is the entrance to the mortuary. There are lots of dustmen here. Interesting. Mortuary entrance. I'm gone. So one way to get I'm in there gone. is of course to die. I'm gone. It's not a biggie in this game if you die, although I All try right. to avoid it because well, you know, it's no fun. Um or you could pretend to be dead and then get Done. in. But you need a higher charisma to pull that one off. Than we have actually right now. Alright. Alright. Alrighty, this looks like Looks like this is it. We pretty much got everything. Shilandra's kit. What's that? Hey, let's check that. Alley of dangerous alleys. Northwestern portion, southeastern portion. Okay. Let's go in there. <coughs> hey, Shilandra. She's pretty. Blast! I almost had it that time. Don't you know it's dangerous to interrupt spellcasters while they are evoking a spell? Luckily for you, I was only practicing. Well, what is it that you want? My apologies for disturbing you. Farewell. Wait, what? That's all? Oh, great. Can't do anything right now. Hmm, maybe later. I'm gone. What's in here? Nothing. Oh well. Too sad she doesn't teach us to be a mage. Okay. Done. Let's go in here. And uh, what do we have here? A guardian spirit. This spectral figure materializes from the gloom of the passage we are ahead and quickly moves to block your path. It floats before you, its once human features twisted in a mask of rage. Defile us! Leave this place at once! Greetings. Leave now! Its booming voice echoes down the hall. This place is forbidden for the living. Leave while you can. I have some questions first. Seek your answers elsewhere. This place is a sanctuary for the dead. I shall not permit their slumber to be disturbed by the intrusion of yet another insolent mortal. Another? Has someone else been here? If you must know, yes, there is another intruder who even now continues to violate the sanctity of these hallowed halls. The anger in the spirit's voice is faded. He seems somewhat saddened by the admission. The souls of my brothers and sisters cry out for peace. Why don't you drive this intruder away? I cannot. The coward has sealed himself within the inner chamber of the mausoleum. He has erected powerful wards that bar my entrance into the chamber. It is from there that he calls upon his dark arts to awaken my brethren and bends them to his evil will. Perhaps I may be of assistance to you then. The spirit remains silent for several long moments. You can almost 
feel the weight of his lifeless gaze upon you. Yes, you might prevail where I have failed. If you will pledge to rid me of this black god, I shall grant you passage. What say you? I'll do Updated it. Updated my journal. So be it. The spirit slowly begins to fade until only the echoing of its disembodied voice remains. But take heed, tread lightly in these halls, lest you join the others in eternal rest. I guess eternal rest won't be our problem. So, what happened? I met a crippled dustman by the Dustman Memorial. He's called Death of Names and his job seems to be burying names by inscribing them on the memorial walls. The place makes me uneasy. The memorial is a huge graveyard of names and each of the walls are like a giant black tombstone. I met a deceased collector named Pox outside of the mortuary gate. Pox knew Farrod, but he didn't know where Farrod could be found. He told me to go find a man named Chairgrave in Red Picker Square, a city block a few bl blocks west of the mortuary. He said Chairgrave hated Farrod and would know where Farrod could be found. I have pledged to help the spirit that guards the mausoleum. It seems an intruding necromancer has sealed himself in an inner chamber with powerful wards that protect him from the spirit. He must be the one responsible for the walking dead Noroji is so concerned about. Um. I have pledged to help the spirit that guards the mausoleum. Yeah, we actually did that. Uh, what is a black Abishai? An Abishai is one of the least forms of the Baatitsu, a race of lawful fiends that seek to impose cruel tyranny on the face of evil. A black Abishai is the lowest of the Abishai, ranking below the green and the red forms. They are the infantrymen and skirmishers of the blood war. They are malicious and compared to the rest of the Baatitsu race not terribly clever. When did I meet one of when did I meet one of those? A small fuck. In any society, there are going to be people who can't live by the law society lays down. Maybe they feel downtrodden and oppressed. Maybe they are driven to the streets because they have no other options. Maybe they are just resentful. Whatever the case, quite a large number of them choose to slip into a life of crime, living by preying of others. You have done it yourself. It doesn't mean you like it any better when they are trying to prey on you. Tiefling female? The lower planes spits evil across the cosmos, infecting everything it touches. Sometimes it swallows people. When they come back, they come back with the lower planes stamped across their faces and their souls, and sometimes they come back bearing children. A child who has been touched by the lower planes is called a tiefling. You know, that actually is part German, because tief is German and means low. Uh, so a tiefling is someone that comes from below. It's a mixture of uh, Ling actually. It's not, not a German ending, it's an English ending. But hey, it's a mixture of German and English apparently. Um, it's called a tiefling and is, it is scarred from birth. Being born with a soul that's unquestionably tainted with evil will do that. The reaction a tiefling earns when growing up scars... When growing up scars it still further. Tiefling tend to be loners, steering clear of trusts and friends, living on their own and uh, living their own lives. When they do trust, they do it sparingly and only over a long period of time, and it's rare that they will ever show it. Okay, and we have upper town class, upper class townies too. Well, this is because we ooh, that really con barely conceals anything. Your dress. Uh, that's probably because we met that mage. Power and wealth create privilege, a private law for those who know how to use them properly. When used correctly, they can create more wealth and power and keep a perpetuating, perpetuating cycle that shuts out the less fortunate and sometimes victimizes them. In Sigil, what this means is that you will run into a supercilious breed of humans whose experience tends to be limited limited by what is um, right and proper. This woman is a fine example of that. Okay, so how about we save here and uh, continue this mausoleum in the next video. 
yeah, this sounds like a plan. So I uh, thank you very much for watching, and we'll see each other in the next one. Bye.